Experiment 1. In this video, we are going to see about Experiment 1. Experiment Visit the websites that is ibm.com, hp.com, dell.com, etc. and get the configurations of various models of portable computer, laptops and notebook. Description Step 1. Type the website address in the search bar and hit enter. Step 2. Related page will open. Then search the terms you need to buy. Step 3. Here in this Dell web page, click the product menu bar. Step 4. Select laptop option from it. Step 5. Here you can see many models with different configuration. Experiment 2. In this video, we are going to see about Experiment 2. Experiment A customer has lost the driver CD of an IBM ThinkPad series laptop. Download all the drivers and burn a CD for the system. Description Step 1. In the search box, type Download all drivers for IBM laptop and hit enter. It displays all the links to download laptop drivers. Step 2. Choose any link. It opens the window that consists of all the drivers for IBM laptop. Step 3. From the list of all popular drivers, choose the exact model name or number of your device and click free download button. Step 4. It will lead to the driver downloaded page. Step 5. After the completion of the download, insert a empty disk into the drive. Right click on the downloaded file and select burn to a CD or DVD from the option. Experiment 3 In this video, we are going to see about Experiment 3. Experiment an old laptop doesn't support a hard disk size greater than 10 GB. Download a latest version of the BIOS and carefully upgrade the BIOS of the given system. Descriptions Step 1 Visit the drivers and downloads the page. Step 2. Identify your Dell product by clicking on Detect Product. Step 3. Alternatively, you can also either enter the service tag or express service code of your Dell computer and click Submit or select your computer manually by clicking on View Products. Step 4. Once you are in the product support page, if you see a page with two tabs under Optimize your system with the drivers and updates labeled Guide Me. Step 5. Ensure the correct microscope Windows operating system is listed next to View All Available Updates. Click Change OS to select the correct Microsoft Windows operating system that is currently installed on your computer. Step 6. Click on BIOS from the list of categories. Step 7. Click download file on the most recent version of BIOS that is listed. Step 8. Click save and choose the path 
where you would like to save the download file on your computer that is if prompted. Step 9. Once the download is complete, click Run. Step 10. Follow the on-screen instructions to complete the installation. Experiment 4. In this video, we are going to see about Experiment 4. Experiment A laptop hard disk has to be connected to a PC IDE port, suggest a suitable converter. Description To connect a laptop hard drive to a desktop computer, you have to use a laptop IDE hard drive adapter. You can easily find this adapter on the internet for $10 to $15. This adapter is very handy if you want to scan a laptop hard drive for viruses and spyware using antivirus software installed on a desktop PC. Transfer data from a laptop hard drive to a desktop computer or create a ghost image from one hard drive to another. I also use this adapter if a laptop hard drive has failed and I have to recover data from it. When you connect a laptop IDE adapter, a desktop IDE cable and a laptop hard drive to each other. Make sure to connect pin 1 on the hard drive. Pin 1 on the desktop IDE cable to pin 1 on the adapter. On a desktop IDE cable, the side painted in red goes to pin 1. On a laptop hard drive, there are two groups of pins. One group has 43 pins and the other has 4 pins. The pin 1 is located on the side closer to the group of 4 pins. After you have assembled everything together, connect the IDE cable to a desktop PC. Connect it to a free IDE connector on the system board. When you start the computer, you should see the laptop drive in BIOS and in Windows. You can treat this drive as a regular hard drive. Experiment 5. In this video, we are going to see about Experiment 5. Experiment Connect a PC IDE disk to a laptop system on a USB port. Description There are two possible ways to connect a PC hard drive to a laptop system. One of the way is by externally connecting your hard drive by the use of IDE or SATA interface enclosure via universal serial bus that is USB cable. Materials needed Laptop and a desktop computer IDE or SATA hard drive enclosure USB cable, IDE cable, screwdriver. Step 1. Turn off your PC and remove the CPU cover. Then unscrew the cover where the hard drive is located. Remove the hard drive from your PC. Step 2. Check the PC hard drive if the IDE or SATA interface. If you are using the IDE or SATA interface enclosure via universal serial cable, follow step 3 to step 4. Follow step 8 to step 7 if you are using 2.5 to 3.5 IDE or SATA interface adapter converter. Step 3. Open the cover of the IDE or SATA enclosure and connect the PC hard drive to the enclosure adapter. 
put the PC hard drive in the IDE or SATA enclosure. Firmly connect the enclosure adapter to the hard drive. Close the cover of the IDE or SATA enclosure and secure it with screws for safety. Step 4. The enclosure is a plug and play device. Now you may connect it to the USB port on the laptop. Turn off the laptop before opening it. Step 5. Attach the 2.5 to 3.5 IDE SATA hard disk adapter converter to the PC hard drive. Make sure that the connected PC hard disk to the converter adapter is firmly connected. Connected the 4-pin peripheral power connected, usually called Moldex connected to the 2.5 to 3.5 IDE or SATA hard disk adapter converter. Step 6. Connect the power cable to the laptop. Check the PC hard drive using basic input or output system, BIOS. The BIOS function is to detect, test and initialize system device like hard drive, floppy drive and integrated video or sound network interface card. Now you can access your files or data in your PC drive in your laptop. Experiment 6. In this video, we are going to see about Experiment 6. Experiment Using infrared port, transfer files between two laptops. Description If you support mobile computer users or if you are a road warrior yourself, you might have run into this situation. You are sitting in an airport with a co-worker and the two of you realize you need to transfer a few files between your notebook computer. The files are too large to put on a floppy disk. So you desire to email them to your co-worker as soon as you can access a phone line. But you probably already have everything you need to set up a file transfer network between your two computers. Most notebook computers made in the past few years have infrared data association that is IRDA ports that you can use for two-way communication. Although few users use the port for anything but printing. Configuring the IRDA port for file sharing is easy with Windows XP or Windows 2000. Step 1. Right-click My Network Places and select Properties. Step 2. Select Create a New Connection that is WinXP or Make New Connection that is Win2K to launch the new connection wizard. Step 3. Select Set up an advanced connection. Step 4. Select Connect directly to another computer. Step 5. Choose Host or Guest Configuration that is configure one of your computers for each role. Step 6. Complete the wizard depending on whether you are setting up the host or guest computer. Make sure you select the IRDA port as the connection device. When finished, simply point the IRDA port on each notebook toward each other and you will have a quick and easy link between the two computers. Recent IRDA ports connect at speeds up to 4 Mbps. 
The earlier IRDA standard supported only 1.5 Mbps. In either case, IRDA file transfer is faster than emailing files over a dial-up connection. Because the host connection requires an account for the guest to log on to, you needn't worry about random people with IRDA devices accessing data on your computer. You can also activate the guest account, then disable the account after you transfer the files. Experiment 7 In this video, we are going to see about Experiment 7. Experiment A customer wants to communicate between some model of a Nokia mobile phone and a laptop. Download a suitable driver and communicate using infrared ports on two systems. Description You need to install tethering driver manually by following below steps. Save the attached zip file to your Windows XP computer and then unzip it. Use a USB cable to connect your phone to your computer. No need to select any USB mode. On the phone, tap settings to open the settings menu. Tap Mobile Data and Networks. Scroll down and tap Mobile Hotspot. Check USB Tethering. The status will change from USB Connected to Tethered. When Windows XP's new hardware wizard opens on the computer, select No, not at this time and click Next. Select Install from a list or specific location and click Next. Click Browse to browse to the directory where you save the driver which is downloaded in Step 1 and click Next. When Windows XP finishes installing the driver, click Finish, that is, you could find a remote NDIS interface under Network Adapters in Device Manager. Now computer network connection is valid and you can join it without any other configuration. If you want to deactivate tethering, just uncheck USB tethering and then network sharing will be stopped. Experiment 8. In this video, we are going to see about Experiment 8. Experiment Install a PCMCIA WLAN card on a laptop and establish a connection with wireless access point in the vicinity. Description after you have installed a driver, system will start to install wireless LAN utility. Follow the steps below to install the utility. Step 1. Once you see the following screen, click Next to continue. Step 2. The screen will show you the default destination chosen by the utility. Click Next to continue or click the Browse button to select an alternate destination. Step 3. The following screen will add program icons to the program folder. You may type a new folder name or select one from the existing folders list. Click Next to continue or click Back to review or change any settings. Step 4. The following screen shows the current settings. 
click next to continue or click back to change the destination folder in step 3. Step 5. The following screen shows you the setup status by percentage. Step 6. The Windows has finished installing Wireless LAN Utility. Click Finish to finish the installation. Experiment 9. In this video, we are going to see about Experiment 9. Experiment Connect two laptops in peer configuration using radio-based wireless LAN card. Description To get started, open the control panel and click on Network and Sharing Center. On the next dialog, click on the Setup a new connection or network link towards the bottom. In the new connection dialog, scroll down till you see the Setup a wireless ad hoc that is Computer to Computer Network option. On the next screen, it will explain what a ad hoc wireless network is and will let you know that if you are currently connected to a wireless network, you will probably get disconnected. Go ahead and click Next. Now you have to give the network a name. Choose a security type and give it a security key. For the security key, you can choose from only three options. No Authentication, WEP or WPA2 Personnel. The default is WPA2 Personnel, which is the strongest. Click Next and then you will get a screen showing you that the network has been set up. Note that if you don't check the Save This Network box, once you disconnect from the ad hoc network, it will simply disappear. If you want to use it again, you will have to start from scratch. Congrats, you have completed the first part. Go ahead and open your list of wireless networks and you should see your newly created one listed along with the rest of the wireless networks. Click on it to connect. Once you are connected, you will see a message next to the network name that says waiting for users. Your network is now ready to accept new connections. Now it's time to actually share data between the two computers. Let's get into the details as it's not as straightforward of a process as it seems. Experiment 10 In this video, we are going to see about Experiment 10. Experiment Install PCMCRA Ethernet card on an old laptop which doesn't have an inbuilt Ethernet card. Description here is a synopsis of the installation process. Unpack PCMCIA CS 3.2 tar.gz in slash USR slash SRC. Run make config in the new PCMIA CS 3.2 directory. Run make all then make install. Customize the startup script and the option files in slash etc slash pcmcia for your site if needed. If you plan to install any contributed client drivers not included in the core pcmcia distribution, unpack each of them in the top level directory of the pcmcia source tree. Then follow the normal build instructions.
the extra drivers will be compiled and installed automatically. Running make config prompts for a few configuration options and check out your system to verify that it satisfies all pre-requests for installing PCMCIA support. In most cases, you will be able to just accept all the default configuration options. Be sure to carefully check the output of this command in case there are problems. The following options are available. Linux kernel source directory. This is the location of the source tree for the kernel you want to use with PCMCIA. Often this is slash usr slash src slash linux but the default location depends on what linux distribution you are using or on where you have chosen to place your kernel source tree build trusting versions of card utilities some of the support utilities that is card ctl and card info can be compiled either in safe or trusting forms. The safe forms prevent non-root users from modifying card configurations. The trusting forms permit ordinary users to issue commands to suspend and resume cards, reset cards and change the current configuration scheme. The default is to build the safe forms. Include 32-bit that is card bus card support. This option must be selected if you wish to use 32-bit card bus cards. It is not required for card bus bridge support if you only plan to use 16-bit PC cards. Include PNB BIOS resource checking. This builds additional code into the PCMCIA core module to communicate with the system's PNB BIOS to obtain resource information for built-in motherboard devices that is serial and parallel ports, sound, etc. to help avoid resource conflicts. If enabled, some extra resource files will be created under slash proc slash bus slash PC card and the LSPNP and Set PNP tools can be used to view and manipulate PNP BIOS devices. However, this setting causes problems on some laptops and is not turned on by default. Module Install Directory The directory that new kernel modules will be installed into, normally this should be the subdirectory of slash lib slash modules that matches your kernel version how to set kernel specific options there are a few kernel configuration options that affect the pcmcia tools the configuration script can deduce these from the running kernel that is the default and most common case Alternatively, if you are compiling for installation on another machine, it can read the configuration from a kernel source tree, or each option can be set interactively. Experiment 11 In this video, we are going to see about Experiment 11. Experiment Configure wireless router or access point for establishing secured wireless network. Description Step to be followed to set up your wireless router on a Windows 7 PC. Connect the wireless router to your modem using an Ethernet cable. Connect your wireless router to a power source. 
wait about a minute and then continue to the next step. Click the network icon in the notification area. The icon should look like a series of vertical bars or a tiny PC with a network adapter alongside it. Select your wireless network from the list of available networks to complete the setup process. By default, your network name will be the name of your router manufacturer. Although newer routers connected to Windows 7 PCs are generally simple to set up, some problematic wireless routers might require a little more attention. If you can't set up your wireless router as explained above, follow the directions included with it. Chances are you will need to use one of the following two strategies. Step to be followed to set up your router using the setup software. Make sure that your wireless router is completely disconnected from the modem, the computer and the power source. On your PC, insert the disk that came with your router or download and run the latest version of the router software from the vendor website. Follow the on-screen instructions. The setup routine will ask you to connect components that is including your modem and PC in a certain order and it may request that you temporarily connect your wireless router to a computer via an Ethernet cable. You will also create a wireless network name and password at this point. If something goes wrong, you may want to consider manually configuring your wireless router. Step to be followed to manually configure your router without setup software. Connect your wireless router to the modem using an Ethernet cable. Connect the wireless router to a power source. Wait about a minute to ensure that your router is fully operational. Connect the wireless router to your computer using an Ethernet cable. Log into your router's web interface by opening a browser and entering the IP address of your router into the address bar. The IP address should be listed within your router's documentation. If you can't find it, most routers use a common IP address such as HTTP double slash 192.168.1.1 HTTP double slash 192.168.0.1 or HTTP double slash 192.168.2.1 Enter the default username and password, which you should find within your router's documentation. Alternatively, visit port forward's default router passwords page. Use the web interface to set up a network name and password. Disconnect your computer from the wireless router and then reconnect wirelessly. Finally, check out our router tips to speed up your wireless connection. Experiment 12 In this video, we are going to see about Experiment 12. Experiment Remotely access the wireless router for its configuration and disable the configuration through wireless access. Description Following steps to be followed to access the router remotely through internet. Step 1. Create an account at any of Dynamic DNS services. 
Step 2. Enable remote management on router. In most cases, you need to find a remote access or device administration section or something like that. For security reasons, we recommend that you specify non-standard port, at least 8080. The best variant would be port like 8417. Besides that, you can specify the range of IP addresses to allow incoming connections from. It should be said that in most cases, the TP-Link equipment has more flexible settings. Here is how to enable remote access to D-Link router. Step 3 Set up DDNS that is dynamic DNS account on your routers. Go to dynamic DNS or DDNS settings section and log in to your no IP or DYN DNS account. Usually you are to select the service provider, enter your login, password and host name that is domain name. Here is how to do it on TP-Link router. And this is how it looks on D-Link. Step 4. Check the remote access to your router. You may use the dynamic hostname or external IP that is IP address of WAN port to access. Type domain underscore name port underscore name in the address bar of your browser to log in to the web interface of your router. You may omit steps 3 and 4. It is possible to access the router via IP address. It is good if you have a static IP or the IP is not changed too often. In this case, you should type something like 5.5.145.115 colon 8459 into the address bar. Refer to the status page of the web interface to find your external IP that is WAN IP.